Hey, you guys. So, um, I just heard something pretty disturbing that I want to speak about. I'm really surprised by this, actually. Um, I, I don't know why anything surprises me anymore, to be honest with you. Uh, what this person said was, uh, there are no more prophets today. The Holy Spirit doesn't speak through prophets any longer. And everything is spoken through Jesus. And the spirit that this person has in them, meaning the Holy Spirit, doesn't ever talk about um, destructive things. Doesn't talk about destructive things like... Um, like when I said uh, all Christians were, were going to be killed, that didn't take the mark of the beast. He said the spirit he has of the Holy Spirit doesn't speak about stuff like that. The spirit he has of the Holy Spirit only wants to let you know that you already have everything that you need. Uh, that's what God's promises are. Uh, you already have it. You just have to, by faith, accept it. Whatever. Let's get to some reality here, okay? I want you to understand, there most definitely are prophets today. And the true prophets are only given messages that are actually reflected in God's word. Uh, there are no any additional words that are being told today through prophets. What prophets are being used for today is to wake up the church. And everything that a true prophet says can be found in the Bible. Can be found in the Bible. So, um... Let me explain to you why the Holy Spirit gave me that message on how the mark of the beast was going to happen. And uh, hopefully you people will start waking up because uh, I'm, I'm, the, the, the more I hear of what's going on out here, the more nervous I'm getting for everybody because you're being fed a bunch of crap out here. You're being fed a bunch of crap. I want to tell you, uh, Jesus gave us everything we need. This is why there are no additional words coming out through the prophets. Whatever the prophets are telling you, it, it will it will always be found in the Bible. This is how you know a true prophet. Okay? Um, but a prophet is being used in today's time to wake up the church. To wake up the church. So, let me explain to you why the Holy Spirit showed me how this was all going to happen. Because of all these uh, false preachers and teachers out here, because of all of these, uh, these pastors that are all for themselves and not of, of their flock, uh, they're not awake, so how can they wake up the people that are following them? They can't. It's absolutely impossible. They can't. So, what's happening? As it says in the Bible, in the end times, people will go to preachers who will tickle their ears, who will tell them what they want to hear, rather than tell them the truth. Okay? So that's why you have all these prosperity preachers out here. That's why you have all these uh, these preachers out here telling you, uh, don't 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 look at anything negative. Jesus doesn't want you to see anything negative. Well, this is just an outright lie. It's an outright lie. What the Holy Spirit is warning the church of is for these false prophets, because we are in the end times. Everything that I have said has been prophesied in the Book of Revelations. So, uh, uh, this guy, he, he made, he made this face like it wasn't coming from the Holy Spirit. 
I think who he's speaking to is not the Holy Spirit. Because our messages are diametrically opposed. I'm so sick of these people out here. It is prophesied in the book of Revelation what's going to happen in the end times. Okay, I'm getting ready to read it to you. So what's going to happen? We're going to have false prophets. We're going to have false teachers. This is why we're told. We're told to examine the spirit. Test the spirit. 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is what's happening. This is what's happening. So you're, you're going to have cults pop up. Going to have false prophets pop up. Going to have false teachers pop up. You're going to have these prosperity pastors pop up. You're going to have, uh, the like New Age, people who just want these self-help things and feel-good preachers. They don't want to know the truth. They don't want to know the cold hard truth. Like the fact that God is the just and righteous God. And he's not playing games. God is not playing games. Jesus' command for us is to love your neighbor as yourself. And you must not be of the world. And God is not playing games here. Everybody needs to understand this. This is the prophet's job. To speak to the church. And oh, sorry, it's not all love and light and flowery and uh, it's, all, it's all about love. We, we all have God's promises. We all have God's promises. If we follow the commandments, if we follow the commandments, you, you, please, people, please, you got to read the Bible yourself. So there's going to be false religions popping up. There's going to be cults popping up. There's going to be people claiming to be Jesus Christ himself popping up. Prosperity gospel saying God wants nothing more than to make you rich. Um, all kinds of weird religions are popping up. Self-help groups popping up. Um, and people are going to want to flock to these, these uh, false teachers and false religions because it is getting more and more dark out in the world. You see what's happening here? How people just, they, they don't care about nobody but themselves. And it's very dark. The world is very, very dark. It's going to get worse. You have to understand it's going to get worse. So this is why people are looking for feel-good stuff to, to escape the darkness of the world. And they want to imagine their God and their version of Jesus Christ as being this flowery person who is not going to hold you accountable for anything. That couldn't be further from the truth. And I'm getting ready to read it to you now. But first, let me read you uh, 1 Corinthians again, chapter 12. This is from the New Testament. I'm going to start at uh, verse 4. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but all of them, everyone, it is in the same God at work. Now, each one, each one of the manifestations of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, okay? This is New Testament, to another prophecy. Prophecy is real, it's relevant today. It is being given by the Holy Spirit for the edification of the church. To another, distinguishing between spirits, to another, speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. And I want to get to the part
Now you are the body of Christ. This is verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, then helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. All Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret, now eagerly desire the greater gifts. So we're actually being told here to desire the greater gifts of being an apostle or a prophet. So prophets are absolutely relevant. They are here. They are blessed by the Holy Spirit to give the messages to the church. That's what we're here for. So where, where all this nonsense comes from, that prophets are uh, prophets went out with the Old Testament is absolutely not true. It is absolutely not true. So here's the reason why the Holy Spirit showed me about uh, the the mark of the beast that it was going to be through religion. Okay, because people are going to be fooled. You see, the imagination of people out here is that um, the Antichrist is going to have some army coming with guns pointed in our faces to try to make us take the mark of the beast. It may be that way in the end, but it's not going to be that way in the beginning. People are going to be fooled into getting the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is going to be on your forehead or your right hand, and it will be visible. It has to be visible because you cannot buy food without it. This is what is going to identify you as a worshiper of the Antichrist. This is the importance of why the Holy Spirit showed me this. Because people will believe that it is it is a, a, a mark. that They're going to be told that it is for God that they are getting this mark on them. They're not going to be told until after they have the mark on them what it really is for. And in the beginning when people first get this mark, it may not be used in the, in the, in the new world system. They may decide to use that mark later on down the road. In the beginning, this is what I was shown. Time will tell if it's the truth. Uh, what I was shown was in the beginning, people will be made to believe that it is an act of worship to get this mark on them to glorify God. And so they will believe that they are being good followers of God and get the mark that they're being told because there will be one world religion. So it's not like people will, will get the mark and they absolutely know that they're they're following uh the Antichrist, they are going to be duped to believe that they are, this mark will, will show how much they love God. And of course, the Antichrist will proclaim himself to be God. This is the importance of this. So now, what's going to happen? Why why is all this important to talk about, people? Why, why is... All of this, this, this dark, horrible truth important to speak about so that you're, you're not in delusion any longer because there is a way out. God, his promises, he will always have a way out for us. There is a way out, which is why it's important every Christian know about this. What does the Bible say about the rapture? 1 Thessalonians 4.17 Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so we will always be with the Lord. Revelation 3.10 Because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try... To try those who dwell on the earth. I'm, I'm going to read that again. This verse right here is the importance of knowing what the Holy Spirit showed me. 
This is the importance. This is the way out that the Lord has given us. Revelation 3.10 Because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world. To try those who dwell on the earth, we will be raptured up with Jesus before the tribulation starts on the earth. So, the importance of you knowing what's going to happen is because Christians out here, they say they have accepted Jesus Christ and they're continuing to live in their sinful life. We're in the end times, people. The rapture can happen at any second and we're not ready. As a church, we're not ready. People think they have all the time in the world and you don't. You don't. No one knows when, when Jesus will come back for us. But we, we what we know for sure is that we are definitely in the end times. This is the importance of why the Holy Spirit showed me this. So this person that gave me that look, questioning whether it really was the Holy Spirit, uh, you can stick it where the sun doesn't shine. That's really what I want to tell you. Because I'm done with people calling me a demon out here. I'm done with it. So, God said, He will always give us a way out. Those who are true to His word. And hear what He said. Because you have kept my word about patient endurance. Means no matter how many, how many people attack you, persecute you, call you a demon and a witch, call you a fake prophet, you're going to come back out here every single day and, and tell the people God's word. This is what you're going to keep doing. Because you have kept my word about patient endurance. Do you understand? Things are different here. I don't care what any of these people out here say. I don't care what they say. Because what the demons are trying to do out here is they're trying to stop people from listening to me. And that is not going to happen. I have no choice. But to make sure that these people, these demons are put in their place. So people can see who they are and what kind of sleep they're in so that you will listen to me. That's all I care about is that you will listen to me. I don't care about what any of these people say. They're not the ones that saved me. They're, they're, all these people are doing is attacking me. And they surely don't care about you. So I will put every single one of them in their place. Because no one is going to prevent anyone from hearing what I'm telling you. This comes straight from the Holy Spirit. This is the reason why the Holy Spirit had given me that message of how this was going to happen. Okay? Because Christians are out here lollygagging like you got all the time in the world. You're, you're still out sinning. You're still out partying. Uh, you think that you're going to boss Jesus around and uh, Jesus is, is only your genie in a bottle and uh, when you want him for something, that's when you'll speak to him. You have got a lot of repenting to do. And th this goes across the board in Christianity. I don't care who don't like it. I don't care who don't like it. it we've got to wake and open our eyes. And while you're in the sleep I've said it before, the truth is brutal when you're trying to wake up. The truth is brutal. You've got a lot of repenting to do. You have got to renounce your sin and you've got to break your attachments, transcend the world. There's a lot of work to be done. And I want to tell you, it took me eight years to do it. Well, that included four years of a dark night of the soul, which was healing my trauma. But it took me a total of eight years to do it. And this was me not being married, not having any children, not having any family. It was just me solely focusing on Jesus. And it took eight years to break every attachment, transcend every concept, every belief that I, that I was taught. In Satan's kingdom to transcend it it's a lot of hard work it's a lot of hard work 
and the majority of you out here are still in the world. You you're, you're, may still be married. You have children to raise. It's going to be twice as hard for you. There is no time to lose. There is no time to lose. This is why I'm so vocal. This is why I will shut down anyone that comes up against me. Because these demons are trying to stop you from hearing what I'm telling you. And it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I have been given an assignment. And I will carry this assignment out. And I don't care who likes it and who doesn't like it. None of these people out here are my Lord and Savior. That's all I have to say. I listen to what the Holy Spirit tells me and nobody else. This is why I do what I do. Now, if these people want to sit back and let people attack them, I will guarantee they don't have mass amounts of people attacking them because they're not doing anything to give Satan a hard time. When you start giving Satan a hard time, then people will start attacking you. Until then, no, Satan's your buddy. Satan's letting you do anything you want. And this is why the church needs to wake up now. But the good news is, Revelation 3.10, because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. You have a way out. You can be raptured up. But you've got to start now. You've got to start now. Revelation 1 7 behold he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him even those who pierced him and all tribes of the earth will wail on account of him even so amen even so amen do you understand God is, is literally wiping everything off this earth he gave his word that he would never end the, the, the earth in a flood anymore and our promise was the rainbow that's what he gave us he is, in fact, going to wipe every person off this earth. This is how evil and vile this earth has become. And he is starting new again. And those who are raptured up will come back down to the earth with Jesus. Do you understand? This is what's happening. And it has been prophesied. And I'm here to tell you, Everything I've read in this Bible, I've experienced a, a mass amount of what, is hap what has been said in this Bible. I know that every word in this Bible is truth. And so I'm here to tell you, wake up. There's no time to lose. We are in the end times. This is why the Holy Spirit gave me that knowledge and, and told me to share it with you. First Thessalonians 5 9 for God has not destined us for wrath but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ do you understand God doesn't want to lose one person that he doesn't have to lose but understand God God is not like us we, we all in the sleep imagine that God is just like us well God loves me he would never hurt me well if you don't keep God's commandments, then you are seen as a sinner and he will not hesitate to throw you into the pit. He will not hesitate. God doesn't have an attachment to anything out here. God created it all and he can destroy everything at will because he does not have an attachment to anything. Which is why we were told to transcend the world. 
We were made in his image and likeness. The attachments that we have, this personhood that we have, this selfishness that we have is the image and likeness of Satan, the adversary. He wants this gone. He wants this gone. So as long as you are still in the image and likeness of Satan, he will not hesitate to throw you into the pit. No matter what any of these people out here tell you. It's right here in the Bible. It's right here in the Bible. First Thessalonians 4, 1 to 18. Finally then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that you that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. You drop that personhood more and more. You transcend that world more and more. Your goal, your goal is to be the spirit man. That's your goal. Get into the existential reality. Every single one of us can get there. But you got to do the work. You have got to do the work. You are saved by grace. And now you have got to do the work to turn away from your sins and transcend the world. It's as simple as that. And if you don't do that, don't think that you're the apple of daddy's eye and he's just going to put his arm around you and say, oh, it's okay, sweetheart, you tried. It's not going to happen. And I'm not out here to tickle your ears. I'm out here to give you the truth. <coughs> For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus for this is the will of God, your sanctification. What does that word mean? Your sanctification. You are to be separated from the world and from all of the people of the world. You are to be separated, which means this personhood aspect of you must be thrown away, must be gone. You must die to self, which is everything that I have been telling you out here. Break attachments, break lusts, break, break desires, break the need for name and fame, break your greed, the seven deadly sins, you must break them, transcend them. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his or her own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. Matthew 24, 42, Therefore stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Mark 13, 32, But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Luke 17, 34 to 37. I tell you, in that night, there will be two in one bed. One will be taken and the other left. Do you understand? If one is taken and one is left, it, it, it kind of, uh, it, I could be wrong, it, it kind of suggests that both are Christians. If they're married together, sleeping in the same bed, it suggests that both are Christians, but one will be taken and one will be left. The one who is left will face God's wrath in the tribulation. That person has the opportunity to repent and they, they, they have an opportunity to be raptured up later on in the tribulation if they live long enough and survive. You don't want to take that chance. You don't want to take that chance. You want to be the person that is raptured up the first time. There will be two women grinding together. One will be taken, the other left. And they said to him, where, Lord? He said to them, where the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. You see, 
God, it, it's, it's all about God's wrath at this point. God is not going to hear anybody's excuses. And this is what I'm trying to get across to everybody. God is not going to hear your excuses. We've all had thousands of years to get this right. And we, we love our sin. We love our sin. This is now God's wrath. Just like he ended the world with Moses, he will wipe every human being off this planet. You have to start repenting now and start renouncing your sin now and turn away from your sin now. Matthew 24, 29 to 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds from the end, from one end of heaven to another. Who is his elect? It's not, it's, he didn't say his church. He said his elect. Who are his elect? It doesn't mean these anointed ones who are out here uh, attacking people. No, that's not his elect. These, uh, these anointed ones who are still of the world that's not his elect. They're not following his commandments. And this is what I've been trying to help them see. And this is what I'm trying to help you see. God is not playing games here. God is not playing games here. This is God's wrath. Understand that. This is God's wrath. He is ending the world. He's the creator of the world. And he decides when he's going to end the world. This is his wrath. And everyone who has sinned against him and worshipped the Antichrist and took the mark of the beast, even if it was by accident, once you take that mark, you have no chance of repenting after that point. This is why it's so important that I share with you what the Holy Spirit told me. This is why it's so important. First Thessalonians 4, 13-18 but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep. <coughs> that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. That When they say fallen asleep, they mean died. For this we declare to you. By a word from the Lord. That we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we will always be with the Lord. Okay, so that's about um, the rapture. This is about the Antichrist. 1 John 2.18 Children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard, that Antichrist is coming. So now many Antichrists have come. Therefore we know that it is the last hour. Revelation 13, 1-18 And I saw a beast rising out of the sea, this is the Antichrist, with ten horns and seven heads, and ten diadems on its horns, and blasphemous names on its head. And the beast that I saw was like a leopard, its feet was like a bear, and its mouth was like a lion's mouth. And to it the dragon gave his power. The dragon 
is Satan. And so Satan is given the Antichrist his power and his throne and great authority. One of its heads seemed to have a mortal wound, but its mortal wound was healed, and the whole earth marveled as they followed the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, for he had given his authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who can fight against it? And the beast was given a mouth, uttering haughty and blasphemous words, and it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. So, the entire tribulation is going to last seven years. Seven years. Second John 1 7 For many deceivers have gone out into the world. Those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh, such a one is the deceiver and the antichrist. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3-4 Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship. So which means he is going to rebel against God, rebel against Jesus, and Christians are going to get the brunt of this because we worship Jesus. Hear me loud and clear. Hear me loud and clear. This is coming straight from the Bible. This is no friggin' demon giving me this. This is the Holy Spirit giving me this. The son of destruction who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Matthew 24, 24, for false Christ and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Do you understand? Christians are the target. I've been saying this from day one. Christians are the target. You have got to start repenting and start renouncing your sin and turning away from the world and you've got to start reading the Bible so that no one can deceive you. So that no one can deceive you. The truth sometimes is not pretty but you need to know the truth, the whole truth and not what's just going to tickle your ear. Daniel 7.25 He shall speak words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints. Shall wear out the saints. That is the Christians. He shall, he shall wear out the Christians of the Most High. He shall wear out the saints of the Most High and shall think to change the times and the law. And they shall be given into his hand for a time. Times and, time, and half a time. That is for three and a half years. Okay, for three and a half years, the Antichrist will be slaughtering Chris Christians. I I is this enough proof for you? Is this enough proof for you? Everything I say is in this Bible. Daniel 11.21 In his place shall arise a contemptible person to whom royal majesty has not been given. He shall come in without warning and obtain the kingdom by flatteries, which is what I told you. He will attain the, obtain the kingdom by flatteries. He is going to manipulate people into taking the mark of the beast. 
He is going to manipulate people. He is going to tell people it is uh, be, be, it is a holy act. It is a righteous act for God. This is what I was shown. Second Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians 2.4 Who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God proclaiming himself to be God. This is exactly what I told you. Okay, I will put these in the description for you. I will put all of these in the description for you. You guys got to start reading what I put in here for you. And you've really got to start thinking for yourself here. There, there's too much garbage going on out here. There is just too much garbage. And it's self-serving the people who are giving the garbage. Okay? It's self-serving. Yeah, you can see that I don't care how I look out here. Um, everybody's got something negative to say about me, but the only thing I care about is that you wake up. That's all I care about. I don't care who likes me. As long as your soul is saved, that's all I care about. That is all I care about. I'll see you in heaven. That is all I care about. Be blessed.